Best of r slash entitled parents episode 19. This is attempt 2 of posting this. Mod shut down the first. The original poster of this was you slash I hatemato. His slash her post was removed for some reason. He slash she called out all of the BS and fake copy paste stories and how they are all the same. Here is the original. I'm a long time reader of this sub. I love reading real stories about entitled parents because I've dealt with them myself. Nothing crazy described here though. It always brought me a few laughs during my breaks during work, or going home on the subway. But now, these stories are just terrible. They are all the same exact thing about a kid wanting candy, to play with our cell phone or handheld game console, or a toy. Then M comes in and either tries to steal it, hit OP, or scream about rape. Or most recently, furries are fighting against the tyranny of Karens for some odd reason. Miraculous. Only one person sees while nobody else in the entire world notices. That one person becomes a savior. Then they somehow know exactly what happened to Karen when she's arrested, and what happened to their kid. All these Karens end up divorced, and in jail within weeks. Are you kidding me? This sub has become a joke and a bunch of creative writing prompts. Please explain to me how all these Karens are massive land whales as they describe them and the different ARPs are all teens. And once Karen decides to hit them they somehow activate their trap card and become Bruce Lee. I'm tired of this. I know other people are tired of this. Hopefully, when school starts up again there will be a decrease in bullshit. On top of you slash I Hatemato's opinion, I also think it's BS that in this modern day and age there are no video recordings of the alleged incidents. Oh, but there always happens to be a CCTV camera that caught it all on camera. And the Karen got W hat SED say RV ed. And some of these stories claim to have these so called Karens commit some serious crimes. Theft, attempted car theft, assault, assault on a minor, lying to a police officer, harassment, just to name a few. Thank you, next. So I don't really know how to explain this bullshit, but for the past 50 plus hours I've been forced to stand in the kitchen and wash all the dishes that my mom and stepdad decided to just throw into the sinks. I haven't slept in forever and my legs are in so much pain that I think I'd just fall face first onto the floor if I walked too fast. Thank you, next. Link on bottom. My 12 year old is on day 3 of a nasty cold. It started on Monday morning when she woke up complaining of a tight throat. Drink some water, I said. Eat some pancakes. Mornings are always rough. I made her pancakes and gave her two vitamin C chewies and two Advil. My cure for just about everything because she's 12 and too young for an apletony, obviously. Monday night, after a full day of school and back-to-back -back rehearsals that ended up 9 o'clock p.m., she was still complaining of the tight throat. Tuesday she added Scratchy to the mix which earned her a one-way ticket to the couch and a front row seat to an 8-hour marathon of the office, but since there was still no cough or visible snot I chalked it up to the sudden change in weather. Early Wednesday morning the coughing started. Ugly, barky, painful coughing. More binging of the office, this time from bed. Two jumbo boxes of Kleenex later it became clear that this cold wasn't going anywhere, and neither was she. This morning the nasty coughing continues as things are breaking up so she's once again spending the day with Jim, Pam and Dwight. It's a tough time to be missing so much school. The end of the quarter is next week, which means this week is critical for tests, etc. And tonight she'll have to miss performing in her special vocal concert with her touring choir. Next week is spring break, and like most everyone else who doesn't live in Tucson or small villages close to the Mexican border. We've suffered through an interminable winter. We're looking forward to going somewhere, hopefully, warm where our souls will start to thaw out a bit, and I know a lot of other people around here are, too. So I'm keeping my feverless, coughing child home, again. You are welcome, local friends. But last night, as I was running around the house wiping everything I even suspect the sick one has touched with alcohol, the rubbing kind, not the drinking kind. Although I was drinking while rubbing, I got to thinking about how over the past 18 years it's infuriated me when parents send their sick kids to school or other events where there will be other kids, hell, other people, and as you know, when I get mad at other parents I do one thing, I write a letter, dear a parents who send your sick kids to school, don't, no, really, 
When your kid has a snotty acid nose that made it past his upper lip, it means he's sick. S-I-C-K. If he's coughing up a lung every 10 minutes, it means he's sick. No fever? I don't give a shit. He's still sick and guaranteed to wipe the slime seeping from his nose with his hand and then grab my kid's pencil or cough without using his elbow and blow germ infested spitchels all over my kid's desk, lunch and face. Listen, I know that sometimes kids get sick from other kids who don't seem sick, but that's not the point. The point is that when you send your snot machine to school because you don't want them screwing up your day you are basically spoon feeding the rest of his class a hearty dose of renovirus. I know you have to go to work, but guess what? You had a kid and kids get sick. Figure it out. And for the love of everything holy, if you did keep your kid home do not take him to Target. I get it. It's tough to go a day without your crack, believe me. I get it, but I've seen you there with your hacking and mucus spewing children so I know you do it. And don't tell me to use those flimsy cart wipes. They can't erase all the germs your slime ridden kid has spread. I know because I regularly use about 10 of them and wipe not only the cart handles but the entire freaking cart. And let's talk about fever and vomiting. There is a 24 hours rule, as in, do not send your child out into the world for 24 hours after his fever breaks or since his last oral explosion. It's not a difficult rule to follow, but you break it all the friggin time, don't you? I do not care that your kid has been home, driving you crazy, for 3 days. Once his fever breaks you're still stuck with him for another entire day. You know as well as I do that fevers come and go. So does vomiting. And sending your kid to school before the 24 hour all clear is pretty much guaranteeing that about 30 other parents will be stuck at home cleaning liquid mac and cheese out of the sheets in about 3 days. It bears repeating. Kids get sick. A lot. But maybe, just maybe, if us clowns like you actually took some parenting responsibility and kept your kid home when his snot is visibly green and running down his face faster than he can wipe it up with his dirty fingers or tongue, his cough rivals that of a sea lion. He had a fever last night but not this morning. The vomit is still fresh on his shirt. It would make a little bit of a difference. Signed, a mom who's coughing, runny nose daughter with no fever is still home and will most likely be tomorrow. HTTPS slash slash your m of day com slash 2014 slash 03 slash letter a shat parent sense at kid school. HTML. Thank you. Next. Worked at a grocery store and a co-worker put a 99 cent sticker on my shirt. We were two of maybe five employees so we were all good friends and everything is funny when you got a pastime on a shift so I just left it there. Some woman came through my line and asked me why I had a sticker on my shirt and I just kinda laughed it off. She asked if I thought it was funny and I was like not really but sorta. She asked if my co-worker put it there to which I responded yes. She told me she was going to speak to the store owner cause it was disrespectful to behave that way at work. She told me to call my manager and I did but he was a super cool guy and knew this lady was an idiot. She talked to the store owner and my manager about firing me to no avail. She accomplished nothing and was a jerk. The end. Thank you. Next. I'm kinda hesitant about posting on here but this story is just too good. Major players. EA entitled aunt. You normal uncle. Me OBV. I'm mom. Okay so this happened a few years ago when my uncle was moving from Mexico to the US to get his master's degree. He left a few weeks before my aunt to get an apartment and start classes while she finished up packing her house in Mexico. As a little backstory, she's one of those people that does awful things, but manages to frame everything as God's will to justify her actions. It's kinda crazy the things she's gotten away with, like telling me that I need an exorcism, and actually lined one up for me but that's another story. Anyways. We met up with them after they had settled into their house and my aunt starts telling us this hilarious story. So apparently she was on the plane from Mexico to the US, and while on the plane there was a businessman in front of her and he had his business laptop with him. The way that she told it was exactly like this in front of my family. Yay. So I was on the plane and I prayed the entire flight that he would leave his laptop on the plane so that I could take it so that your uncle could do his homework. God knows that we need the money and can't afford a new laptop, so if he leaves it, it's a sign from God for me to take it. M. But you didn't take it did you? Right single quotation mark. EA. Well that's the wonderful thing. 
It was a miracle because when he was getting off the flight he left his laptop in the front pocket of the seat, and I prayed harder that he wouldn't remember that he was missing his laptop. So I waited until the plane was empty and I grabbed it. God really works miracles. Right single quotation mark. M. What the hell is wrong with you? You realize that business laptops can be tracked right? You need to return it. Right single quotation mark. You. That's what I told her. But she won't let me see it so I can contact the guy. EA. I really don't understand what's so wrong with it. God wanted US to have IT. You don't appreciate anything I do for you. Can't you see it's what God wants for US? So my mom ended up forcefully taking the laptop and mailing it back to the owner, but the moral is that my aunt is insane. This isn't even the worst thing she's done but I don't think it belongs necessarily in this subreddit. Face with tears of joy. Edit. So since everyone wanted the exorcism story I decided to post it on the comments somewhere. Woman with light skin tone shrugging. Thank you. Next. This is my third post in three days. Not because I have a wild imagination and nothing better to do, but because I'm 26 years old and only discovered this subreddit three days ago, and have nothing better to do. As with my previous two stories woman ripping off my mum's prosthetic arm and going on holiday with an EM, this story takes place way back when. This may be my earliest memory of an EM. Actually, EM, the origins, if you will. First, there's the initial encounter. My primary school had a bring your toys to school day. I was about 8, and the idea was simple. Everyone brought in a toy and shared it with their classmates. We ended up being put into groups of 4 or 5 because there was too much arguing. Kids who weren't friends with other kids but wanted to play with their toys. And in my group happened to be a boy named Daniel who had never really liked me. He ended up bringing in a Transformers toy, whereas I brought a giant Megazord. Power Rangers to show off because it was brand new and I was smug AF. The thing about Mega Zords is that they break down into 5 individual Zords, so I did just that and gave each one to a person in the group and we had a good time. It was the kids equivalent to cracking a few beers with your besties. I was flying high. However, when it came to packing up at the end of the day, I was missing a Zord. I had a funky feeling about good old Danny boy, because he'd never liked me, and so, I went through his bag and found it, I didn't say anything, didn't tell a teacher, I simply took it back, put his bag back and tucked it away, later, as I waited for my mum to pick me up, I showed off my toys to other kids in the playground, and that's when a woman, one of the parents, made her way over to me, it was Daniel's mother, and Daniel was a little behind her. She asked me what the names of the toys were. She asked me where my parents had bought them. She asked me how much they cost. I told her everything I knew as an 8 year old who knew absolutely nothing. And she sighed. My mum then arrived and the two started to have a conversation while Daniel just stared at me. I even watched his face drop as he noticed I'd taken my Zord back. And he started going through his bag and a half. By the time our mothers were done, they seemed to be the best of friends. Daniel's mother turned to me and asked how I'd feel about a sleepover at their house sometime, seeing as Daniel and I had so much in common. Despite everything in me telling me this guy was a danger to me, I craved Daniel's approval. I wanted his friendship because he'd been so mean to me for so long. I saw this as a chance to make things work between us and I accepted, eagerly so. The date was set for the following Friday, and for the rest of the week, Daniel was my best friend. Second part the ambush. My mum drove me home from school that Friday so I could get a change of clothes and an overnight bag. As I was getting ready, I got a call from Daniel's mother. She asked me if I could bring those toys you brought to school along with anything else her son might like. I agreed and ended up packing a second bag full of my most treasured toys. All of which, BTW, are expensive. Just google how much Megazords cost. Worth noting. It's not like we had a lot of money, I only had all these big, expensive toys because my parents always gave me the option between allowance and little things, or big things every so often. I always wanted the big things, so would go the whole year without a new game or toy, then get spoiled on my birthday. I prefer that. When my mum dropped me off at Daniel and came in for a coffee, it was just Daniel, his mother and myself. We immediately went to his room and emptied out all my toys. 
We started to play and he told me how much he loved all my things, and I felt like the coolest kid alive. Then, my mum called up that she was leaving and I acknowledged her with a loud grunt B slash C the city was being destroyed and I had to save it. About 20 minutes later, I hear the door open downstairs and it gets loud. Really loud. It sounds like thunder coming down the hallway. I turn my head and there are about 6 other kids ogling my toys. I introduce myself but they don't care. They charge into the room, push me aside, and start playing with Daniel, who immediately starts playing with them, too. For the next hour, I keep trying to insert myself into their game. They've got their grubby, jam hands all over my toys, and they are outright ignoring me, not answering me back, not letting me grab anything, not including me at all. I start to get very upset and, eventually, decide to go downstairs. I didn't want to tell Daniel's mother what was happening outright. I didn't want the hassle. But I was hoping she'd ask me what was wrong and I could somehow explain it without telling. I wandered into the kitchen and asked for a drink, then did my oh woe as me 8 year old sulk. She asked me if I was having fun with Daniel's siblings slash cousins and I let it slip they weren't including me. She told me to stop being so selfish. You play with those toys every day. Let them have some fun. She raised her voice and held the drink out of reach. I thought I was being nice letting you come over, but if you don't want to share then maybe you should leave. I immediately start to sob. Being told off by another parent was always the worst thing for me. It was expected of teachers and my own parents when I messed up, but on the few occasions another adult had raised their voice at me, it always made me feel like I'd done something irredeemable. 8 year old me couldn't process it. As I stood there crying in her kitchen, she told me to stop being a little girl and get back upstairs. I went up without a drink and sulked in the corner of Daniel's room for another hour. His mother came up a few times, asking if we were all having fun and when she saw me in the corner on my own, she just glared. At one point, I ended up wandering the upstairs hallway of Daniel's house, bored and upset, and I noticed a landline in his parents' bedroom. This was before 8 year olds had phones, late 90s, and not wanting to cause a scene downstairs, I decided to sneak in and ring my mum. I told her that I'd upset Daniel's mother and Daniel wasn't speaking to me, and she told me she'd be right over. I still didn't understand what I'd done and I was blaming myself. My mum came to the house with a knock on the door and a smile. Her and Daniel's mother went into the kitchen and I stood about midway up the stairs listening in. That's when Daniel's mother explained that I was being selfish and disrespectful to her. She told my mum that I came downstairs demanding that Daniel and his family not touch my toys, just watch me play with them. She said she'd tried to explain about sharing and then I got overly emotional, and that when she tried to calm me down, I told her to fuck off. Now, I wasn't a perfect child, and given two or three more years, I probably would have told her to fuck off. But at eight years old, no. My mum knew I would never do that. She clocked her lies there and then, but pretended to buy it, and as exited the kitchen, I ran back upstairs and rejoined the others. Knowing what was about to happen, I immediately started saying loudly why won't you let me play with you, and why are you ignoring me? I was trying to elicit a response, and I did. One of Daniel's female cousins, who also went to our school and was in our year, told me to shut up fatty, to which my mother came storming into the room. All the kids shot up. My mum simply said pack your stuff, we're going and after a few moments of looking awkward, Daniel's mother told the kids to wait downstairs as I gathered my things. She began pleading with my mum, saying they were just being kids and that I was no better than them when my mum wasn't around. My mum was having none of it. She ignored Daniel's mother until my bag was backed, then we proceeded to head out. When we got into the driveway, Daniel's mother came barreling out the house and grabbed hold of my bag tearing it out of my arms. She opened it and grabbed my Megazord, the one I'd taken to class that day, and proclaimed this is Daniel's. How dare you try to steal it? Being my most prized possession, and costing a little too much for a toy, my mother knew it wasn't his. She calmly walked up to Daniel's mother and asked for it back as the kids gathered in the doorway, giving me the coldest stare I've ever received. My mum and her argued for a good 10 minutes. She went from claiming the toy was Daniel's, to begging for him to borrow it, to outright saying I didn't deserve it. The one line I remember, as clear as day, is this. 
You're an only child. You don't need all those toys. The hostage situation ended when my mum threatened to call our next door neighbor, who was a police officer. Daniel's mother gave the Megazord back, and she went inside slamming the door shut, and they all made fun of me, loud enough for us to hear, as we backed out of their drive. Daniel continued to bully me throughout primary school and for a few years of high school. His mother would give mine death stares when they ran into one another shopping in our town, and there were several parents who gave us dirty looks during parent-teacher evenings, too. But we managed just fine. Thank you. Next. Quick info, I go to this gaming cafe to play games, actually only x go. The cafe uses GG Leap. It costs zero dollars. Eight roughly for an hour. I usually dump a lot of money at once and buy shit loads of hours so that I don't need to worry about that later. Cast, me, M, esque, entitled spoilt kid. So this happened yesterday. 5 12 19. It was a fairly quiet day. Three other people excluding me and the manager. I got bored so I was chit chatting with him and decided to grab something to eat together. We return almost 15 minutes later and I see a kid playing where I was seated. I didn't log out, and a lady watching him play. Funny enough, I had never seen him before. I'm a regular. Okay cool I said to myself and went to talk to him. Me. Hey buddy. I was sitting here before. Didn't you see that someone was already logged in? Esk. Buzz off fatus. Let me play Fortnite. M. Yeah asshole. Let him play. Don't disturb him. Cool 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 no doubt. I didn't mind cause that was the best PC in the cafe, not in terms of performance, the fan is right above the person sitting on it, the windows when opened give fresh air and an amazing view. So I went to one of the other 15 remaining PCs, there are total 20 excluding the one manager uses, I log in and boom, it displays that this login is being used on another PC. I already know who's using it but still go to the manager and ask who's using my login. He confirms my suspicions. It's the egg. So I tell him all that happened. He's pissed and asks me if I want him to intervene. I say no and go up to the egg. Me. Hey bro. Are you using my GG Leap login? Esk. Hey Fatus. What did I tell you about not disturbing me? Also what if I was using your login? M. Go fuck off you cunt. Let my son play. Proceeds to shove me. Voice. So I go again to the manager's PC. BTW he shouts thanks for the 48 hours. I had put in 48 hours. The cafe uses GG Leap so the main PC. Manager's PC. Can control everything. I tell him my plan and also call up the owner. We're really good friends. And tell him everything. He allows me to go ahead. I turn on the remote control option while he's playing Fortnite. He is pissed. He's throwing grenades at himself. I am but he doesn't know evil laugh, shooting random places and shit. He is pissed. The thing is, he doesn't know what's happening. He's confused enough. Me, the manager and the owner, he's on video call, are crying of laughter. Oh the fun. I decide it's enough and finally put an aimbot file into the PC and run it. He doesn't realize as he's in the washroom, plays a game and boom band. He gets pissed and I mean it. He was wailing. His mom had to calm him down. Nobody knew, except me, manager, owner and the esk. He had to be kicked out cause of the commotion he was causing. While going out I shouted, enjoy the ban. His face showed it all. Edit 1. It was his Fortnite account which got banned. He was using my GG Leap account. Edit 2. Added the no doubt cause a fellow redditor was feeling uneasy. 